Um, I will be quick. I really want to honor your time. I really, really, really want to thank you for all that you do um, and just for being here. Um, so my name is Laura Fenn and I am the creator and founder of The Walking Classroom. And we're a nonprofit program. We've been around about 10 years now and we have tens of thousands of students walking around the country. And I'll tell you a little bit about the program, how it started and then also how uh, the program might be able to be used within your classrooms or after school programs, um, especially given the hybrid remote models that we're working with. Um, all right, if you do have any questions, you can go ahead and uh, activate the chat. And uh, I'm also Deborah Ives is our executive director. She's also on the line with us. So as we're going along, if you have questions, um, she can try to answer them for you in real time. And then at the end of the presentation, I'll run through. And uh, if there's any questions that Deborah didn't get to, I can go ahead and take care of that for you. All right, let's go. Um, so by the end of the presentation, uh, like I said, you'll understand what the walking classroom is. I'll review the research a little bit, um, the go over the content and the structure of the program and the resources that we have available to supplement the program. And then uh, we'll talk about some ideas for remote and hybrid learning and then give you a chance for some questions and answers. Okay. So <laughs> kids sit a lot and it's not good for them or their brains. I know this is not news to you. And so the basic idea of the walking classroom is that students listen to kid-friendly, standards-aligned podcasts while they walk. So instead of sitting in a classroom and listening to a lesson about the Boston Tea Party, students get up and out of their seats and they get some desperately needed fresh air and exercise while they listen to a 15-minute podcast about the Boston Tea Party. And I got the idea for the program um, when I was a teacher. I started my teaching career up in East Harlem, uh, New York City. And then I taught in a very fancy area in Westfield, New Jersey. And then I taught uh, down here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And sort of regardless of where I was teaching, um, the scenario was the same. And that was time for PE and recess was being cut or eliminated altogether. Um, and it actually got so bad that when I was in North Carolina, there was a mandate that the students had to be active for 100 minutes a week. And, but with everything else that the teachers had to do, um, you know, PE and recess time was being cut. But even with that, you know, we were not able to fill the 100 minutes of physical activity. So what administration started to do was count the minutes that were spent walking from the classroom down to the lunchroom as physical activity or to count the minutes walking from the classroom, you know, down to art class or whatever special um, as physical activity. And so it was just really heartbreaking. Um, you know, the kids were just miserable. They were in the classroom a lot. And especially those students who needed to move, those students who needed to get out, they were the most miserable. And so one day I had had a really bad day and I came home and I was grumpy, grumpy, grumpy. <laughs> and I decided to go for a walk. And while I was walking, I was listening to a podcast that I had downloaded. Um, and I always laugh at myself because it wasn't some, you know, like heavy metal, you know, angry music or, you know, some sort of like loud rap music. It was this educational podcast about um, Betsy Ross and did she really make the first American flag? Um, and so as I was walking, my mood was improving, I was learning something, I was, you know, waving to my neighbors. Um, and as teachers, you know, you never turn off being a teacher. And so I thought to myself, oh, my kids could do this. And so um, I went home and literally that night I started working on recording some of the lessons that I would have taught to my students while they were sitting down. Um, and I created audio files. It was still me teaching. It was still, you know, sort of this lesson about whatever, but they were not going to be listening to it in the classroom. They were going to be listening to it outside. And I went to Walmart and I got a, you know, a bunch of tiny, cheap uh, little MP3 players. And um, I said to my principal, I said, hey, so I know we're not really allowed to take the kids outside, um, but here's the thing. 
how about they listen to educational podcasts? It's still me teaching. It's still, you know, aligned to what they're supposed to be doing, but we're going to do it outside. And my principal said to me, she said, you know, I'm getting ready to retire. I don't really care what you do. And so that was the only way that I was able to, you know, initiate this program. And so we started and we started walking. And it, again, this was totally seat of my pants, something I had just made up. I hadn't done any research. I hadn't, you know, like, I just wanted to just, just see. My whole thing was that I just wanted to get the kids outside and get them some fresh air. I really didn't think they would learn anything. I figured if they did, that would be gravy, but I wasn't expecting. I just wanted them to get their blood flowing so that when we got back to the class, they could learn better and more. And I promise you, on the eyes of my children, I was floored. Um, you know, your smart kids, your kids who do well in a traditional classroom, um, they're not the best listeners because they don't have to be. They have all the other skills that they need. They're good readers, they, they can sort of you know, use different tools. They've, they've been exposed to lots of different things. Um, but it was my ADHD kids, my autistic children, my dyslexic children, my behavioral issue children, my kids who were sort of on the periphery of the classroom and who were not necessarily regularly engaged in classroom discussion, they were the best listeners. And so we would get back to class and they were the ones who were sharing and they were the ones who were really carrying the class and they were the ones who were contributing the most. And, you know, when you're 10 years old, to feel smart for the first time is this really, really powerful, um, impactful feeling. But not only did these students feel smart themselves, but the other students also saw that these kids were smart and had value and, and you know, were contributing members of the classroom just because their learning style was different, it, but it had never been tapped into before. So anyway, it was just this really, really powerful um, understanding of a way to engage different learning styles and to enable more students to be more successful. Um, but they didn't even realize, they just thought they were getting outside. They just thought they were having fun. They thought they were getting out of class work. They didn't even realize how much they were benefiting. They just thought it was fun. So that was the beginning of the walk-in classroom. Um, the program, the structure is still the same 10 years later. Um, you know, so the picture on the right is uh, a, a class using the program. The kids all listen to the same podcast at the same time while they um, And then they get back to class and, uh, you know, we've got a lot of support materials and I'll show you how to use those um, as well. Um, so anyway, this is one of my favorite illustrations ever. And one of my expressions when I was teaching was, um, if the bum is the numb, if the bum is numb, the brain is the same. So if you're sitting on your fanny all day, um, you know, you're gonna, your brain is gonna be blue and green. But if you're up and walking, you know, your brain activates, you have no control over that. It just is this magical thing. Um, you get the oxygen, you get ready to learn. Uh, and so, you know, just 20 minutes of walking a day really does have such a positive impact on students' learning. And like I said, it's just so much more fun than to just sit all day. So we were fortunate in that um, we were able to work with the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill uh, a few years ago, and they did um, a program evaluation. And they found that students who participated in the walking classroom had increased learning and retention. So it turns out that kids actually learn and retain more when they're up and moving. And so, like I said, for kids who really struggle to sit in a traditional classroom setting or who, you know, in these remote or, you know, hybrid learning times, they're sitting in front of a computer screen for a majority of their school day, uh, the walking classroom is a really welcome and impactful change. And walking improves their moods. So uh, given the current situation that teachers are in and my heart breaks um, and that the students are in, uh, everybody could use a little mood booster. So let's do it. Okay. So here we have the walking classroom. Um, so I'm going to show a short video of the program in action. And the segment features a regular classroom setting 
but I do want you to realize that the walk-in classroom is very adaptable and can be used in other situations like out of school time or if you're completely with a remote learning situation. The walk-in classroom really does provide a nice way to have like little learning pods. Um, and the great thing is that teachers or facilitators, you know, they don't need to have all this background information. All they do is need to, you know, all right, kids, let's figure out which podcast, cue it up and then listen to it and the rest is taken care of. It's ready to go out of the box. Oh, and don't forget the masks. Okay. So here is our walkumentary. We have fun walking around the track and your heart is pumping fast so you feel more energized and not sleepy. We get more fresh air instead of sitting in the class. We usually do it almost every day at the beginning of the day. I think it's healthy because you get the energy you need. Welcome to another installation of The Walking Classroom, where we move while we learn. My name is Sophie, and I'm joined by Jim. Our teacher, Mrs. Fenn, is also joining us on our walk today, and we're glad you're here, too. We are... Thank you. So I was a fifth grade teacher for a long time. Over the years, while I was teaching, time for me, this was being cut. The kids, it's just not natural for them or healthy for them to sit all day. I knew my students needed more fresh air and exercise, but I also knew that I could not risk sacrificing instructional time. So what I started to do was record some of my lessons that I would have taught to my students. I loaded them up on MP3 players, the walkets, which are what the players are called. They come preloaded with all the podcasts. So literally ready to go. Teachers get their delivery, they put in the batteries, and the program is ready. Our teacher picks a lesson, and then we go outside and listen to it. I mean, it depends on how long the lesson is. It can go from 15 to 20 minutes. It's nice because you learn something new while getting uh, exercise at the same time. Good morning, my most amazing classroom. Good morning, my most amazing teacher. How are you doing today? We're looking good and feeling fun. My favorite thing about it is that not only do the kids get to get outside walking, but I get to get outside walking. So everyone just, just likes it. It's a good, happy part of the day. We have another friend, boys and girls. Laura Fenn is here. She is the one that we listen to on our walking classroom. So can we all say hello? Hello. Good morning. I am so happy to meet all of you guys. It's very exciting. <laughs> and she sounds just like it. <laughs> and when you're outside getting some fresh air while you're walking, what else is happening? Oh, you, you learned the lesson? You learned the lesson, right? So it's a win-win. Yes, ma'am. We know her because she's the one who talks on the podcast. She's like the teacher of the students on the podcast. She teaches them while they are walking, which also teaches us. And then go ahead, take out your walket. 70 today. Can you just check the battery, please? I'll just double check your tennis shoes. Make sure your shoes are tied. Actually, it's a perfect fit for our school because uh, our focus is math, science, and technology. And a lot of times, the technology piece is really challenging for folks to get their head around how that should be meaningfully integrated into a classroom. This program seamlessly integrates with the classroom environment, and it's a meaningful way to embed technology in the core curriculum. Now in the 21st century, we're looking for a minds-on curriculum where kids are actively engaged and getting them up and moving while they're processing the content is another great strategy for achieving that. I think it's easier uh, listening to it because when you're listening to it, you don't get frustrated because if you don't know what something is, like Ms. Fenn, she details it very well. Did you know the word cardiovascular comes to us from ancient Greece? Cardio is Greek for heart and vascular means having to do with tubes that carry liquid, like blood. So basically, when you do cardio, you're pumping up your heart. And so it's very engaging for the students who are listening. It's almost as if they're overhearing a conversation rather than having a direct lecture. When I walk, I feel like I don't want this day to end. That makes me so happy. Yes, sir. While you finish up your walk, 
Take off your headphones and discuss with a partner some of the concepts you learned about during this podcast. Happy trails! Once we're done with it, we take off our earbuds, we hang them on our neck, and then if we see anyone else that's done, we can just walk to them. We can kind of discuss what, what was going on in the podcast. We actually tell each other what we learned. So boys and girls, what are some new things that you heard today? Can you tell your neighbor one thing that you heard them say? And we come back in and write about it. So they have the, not only do they have the auditory processing, but they also have the kinesthetics and writing and all of that stuff. So they're getting a lot of different modalities of learning, not just one way that we might have in class. We always listen to each podcast at least two times, and we talk about what we heard different from the first time or anything new or anything interesting that we missed the first time. So they listen to it the first time, they get a big picture idea. And the second time, they're able to sort of hold on to a little bit more information, get into a little bit more detail and have a deeper understanding. Our overwhelming response from teachers is that their students, they perform better academically, they're more engaged, they're more focused. Um, and as far as the teachers, it provides them a tool to address different learning styles. So we're, we've been thrilled with the results. Happy trails! <laughs> So at the end of every podcast, we say happy trails. So if and when your students start using it, you're going to get very sick and tired of that. Um, and also, you might have noticed that it's a beautiful sunny day, but they were in California. Well, what if you live in Alaska or what if you live you know, where it rains all the time. Um, it's no problem. We actually have students that use the walk-in classroom year round. And what they do is if it's too cold or if it's rainy, they just do an indoor route. And so instead of, you know, walking around the school or walking around the block of the school, um, they'll just do an interior route. So along the hallways and then up and down the stairs. Um, honestly, the kids are just happy to get out of the classroom. So, um, I used to laugh that my students used to say that, you know, I could make them walk on glass in, you know, lightning storms and they'd be fine as long as we're outside. <laughs> so they're just happy to get out of the classroom, whatever. And I see you nodding. Yes, they, they just want to get out. Um, so anyway, so that's that. Um, so what do the kids listen to while they walk? Well, we have an entire school year's worth of podcasts that come preloaded on the walkets. Um, we have uh, si science, social studies, English language arts, and more biographies, um, you know, parts of speech. Each podcast begins with a health literacy message, and that's pulled into the discussion. And then there's also uh, a character value that's also highlighted with each podcast. Um, and we will send you all of these slides that have all the information on it. So um, just in honor to honor your time, I'm just trying to go through it quickly, but don't worry, we, we will send you all of this information. Um, but for example, here's a podcast um, on political versus physical maps. And the um, health literacy message at the beginning is personal space. And then and the character value is reliability. So um, most of the podcasts are presented in the, a similar format, very conversational, um, where it's two students and their teacher who are out for a walk. Um, and they're real kids. They're actually former students of mine. Uh, we all I had my students come to my house and we were recording in this small little closet. Um, but so it's very authentic. It's not sort of, um, you know, like I had mentioned in the video, it's not these really super boring adults who are sort of talking at the students. Um, it's, it's much, much, much more conversational than that. It's a lot of back and forth. It's a lot of review and a lot of questioning um, and some corny jokes thrown in there. But um, so they're all structured pretty much the same way. So so there's a health literacy message. So, you know, whether it's the, ex the connection between exercise and cognitive function, the importance of sleep, you know, empty calories versus protein calorie, you know, versus healthy calories, whatever. Um, and then, but again, it's not heavy handed. So what, if one of the students, uh, one of the podcasts, um, you know, the student might say, oh man, I don't know why I'm so hungry. I had three donuts for breakfast this morning. And then the other child will say, you know, man, you know, you're going to make yourself sick. You can't have three donuts in the morning. 
And then the teacher chimes in and she says something about, you know, a donut every now and again is okay, but you know, you don't want to make that a habit because, you know, you really will make yourself sick and then goes into a quick discussion about healthy calories versus empty calories. And then the conversation pivots to the main content of the story of the of the podcast. Um, and then there's a summary. So the political versus physical maps, for example, um, you know, that podcast begins with the one kid complaining about how one of their friends is a really close talker. Um, and then the teacher explains a little bit about, you know, cultural differences and, and the importance of, you know, you know physical distancing in, in this case, um, but also just how different people have different norms. And so how it's important to respect what other people, you know, is appropriate for them or what they feel comfortable with. Um, and then that idea of physical space sort of translates, you know, sort of pivots into a discussion about physical and, and political maps and how that space, you know, is determined. Um, and then, you know, at the end, there might be um, a discussion about, um, you know, the social emotional learning, uh, you know, I don't remember what that might be, but it might be, you know, something about empathy and, and you know, just so all, all, all pulled in into a beautiful package within 15 minutes, you'll be shocked. Um, and then there are lesson plans that support each podcast. So this podcast is about hot springs and geysers. And the, um, as you can see, the health literacy message in the beginning is toxins. And then the character value is approaching obstacles. And each lesson plan is structured the same way where it goes. It has a brief synopsis of what the overview of the podcast is, and then what the objectives of the podcast are different vocabulary that you might want to review before um, you begin the podcast. And we have a lot, and I'll review that in a second, but we have a lot of supplementary teacher resources. We have Google Slides for all of these lessons. So, you know, it's very easy that you could, you know, sort of click through these and all that is, is done for you. Um, and then there's questions for thought and discussion and the questions, you know, a lot of just basic review of the podcast itself. But then a really, really rich component of the program are these social emotional learning questions. And so, for example, this one, it says, um, you know, while hot springs occur gradually and, and peacefully, geysers appear dramatically and forcefully. And it says they're both very different. They're both important. And so using that as a base, it helps it helps a discussion, it helps initiate a discussion about communication styles and when is it important to be forceful and when is it important to be, you know, quieter and more patient. And so, you know, it, it sort of builds a bridge and if the child is comfortable talking about his or her experience, um, they can go straight into that. But if not, they can sort of couch what they're saying using the framework of geysers and sort of use that as a, as a bridge and not make themselves so vulnerable. And then, like I said, each podcast has those health literacy messages as well as that social emotional learning piece built in. So as the program is used throughout the year, not only are the kids getting healthy from walking each time they use it, um, so they're building their physical strength um, and their mental health, just getting out and getting some exercise, but they're also building their social emotional skills as well as their health literacy so that they can make healthier choices going forward. And then each podcast also has a comprehension quiz uh, that supports it. And the first eight questions um, are all related to the podcast. And so they go from basic recall down to higher level thinking skills like, you know, sequencing and inferencing. And then the last two questions are always health related. So that topic for the um, hot springs and geysers was about toxins. And so these two health questions are about toxins. Okay. Okay, and then there are supplemental activities found on the adopter resources page. Now, you'll have to forgive me because I'm gonna click on this and I don't know if it's gonna mess up my whole screen. I practiced it earlier and it went okay. One time it went okay and then another time it was wonky. So um, if I sort of panic a little bit, just <laughs> my IT team is gone. I don't have one. Um, and so it's just me. So we're gonna have to forgive me while I bumble through this. Okay. So, Ken, are you able to see my whole screen? Let me see. No, you can't see my whole screen. Okay, 
let me make this bigger. There we go. And then I'm going to pull this down. There we go. Oops. Okay. No, it's not working so much as much as I want. There we go. There we go. Hopefully that's better. Okay. So, um, when you, if, if you adopt the walk-in classroom, if, you're, if you and your students adopt the walk-in classroom, we have so many resources to help you implement the program. And at the top of any web page is teacher resources. You would click there. And then are you a walk-in classroom adopter? Well, as a matter of fact, you will be. And then you would click there. So we have each podcast um, has supporting resources and I'll go through that in one second. Um, but we also have a really handy teacher toolbox. And in that teacher toolbox, um, you know, there's, you know, supplemental activities that, all, and all of this is free. So there's supplemental activities for, you know, the different podcasts. There's a monthly walking log that you can use to track how far you've gone, what podcast you've listened to, and you can turn that into math activities. So if you are starting in Indiana and you want to walk to Disney World um, after COVID vaccines and <laughs> we're all open up and let's pretend it's the before times. And so you want to walk down to Disney World from wherever you are. Um, so you can set a goal for yourself. So if you had 30 students in your class and it's going to take you a thousand miles, um, if you each walk, if each child during one walking classroom session walks a mile, that's 30 miles, you know, how long would that take you? So you can do your distance, you can do your time, um, lots of different resources and all of that is included with, um, you know, uh, on our teacher resources page. Um, then we also have listening journal ideas. And that's a really great thing to do, especially with remote or hybrid learning is, you know, a lot of these walk-in classroom podcasts can be assigned for the students to listen to at home. And it's actually a really nice activity for them that they can do um, with their caregiver, whether it's a parent or a neighbor or a grandparent. Um, you know, the, these walking, these listening journals, um, you know, they can say who they walked with, what they thought about. Um, so anyway, that's also an option. We also have um, lessons on how to teach students to practice thick questions. So if they have a walking partner, uh, six feet apart, of course, but if they have a walking partner when they get back or while they're walking after they're finished listening to the podcast, if they were to take off the headphones um, and instead of looking at each other and just say, oh, what did, you, did you like it? Um, they can actually think, they can practice developing better questions. And so, well, what did you think about this? Or what would you have done in this position? Or why did X do Y? You know, so just really practicing that skill, not just for the walk-in classroom, but again, as, as a life skill. Um, and again, so lots of different resources, starting a walk-in club, all that other sort of fun stuff. Um, but then we also have this really handy resource where you can search podcasts, um, where you can search for the resources by podcast. So on here, you can search by subject area, by themed grouping. Um, so, you know, if you're doing a lesson on the Civil War or Explorers or the Revolutionary War, so there's lots of different things that you can look for. Um, so since we just looked at the one about geysers, I will search for geyser. And then here we have listed, um, you know, all of the, the curated resources that we have found um, to help supplement your instruction on hot springs and geysers. And we have it for, you know, figurative language. We have it for biographies. We have it for, you know, for every podcast topic, we have all of these additional resources. And so if you use Google Classroom, we have it, uh, we've already put the quiz into a Google uh, format for you. We've got a slide deck that'll help you introduce it. And then here is a collection of related videos and additional resources. Um, so let's just say if you wanted to take a, a virtual field trip to Yellowstone and you could show the students, you know, hot springs and geysers in action, for example, um, all of these resources have been, you know, curated for you. So um, hopefully making that relatively easy. All right, now I'm going to try to close out and get back to the presentation. Let's see. Let's see if I can do this. You don't want to see this whole thing. 
Look at me. Look at me go. All right. Okay. So like I said, you also, um, you know, traditional um, programs or out of school time, always wearing your masks. And then if you were to do it in a traditional school, um, the, the walkets themselves are very durable. And so they can, you know, you want to store them separately, but they can withstand, um, you know, a cleaning with like a, a Clorox wipe. Um, and then just as long as they're, you know, housed separately. So these are just, you know, shoe racks that we just put them in there. And um, we always encourage the students to each have their own earbuds, uh, even if we weren't in COVID times. So we talked a little bit about um, listening journals. And so with the listening journals, you know, if, if, especially if it's assigned at home, um, students can, the date that they listen to it, how far they traveled, they can do a summary of the podcast. And then what's a really great thing that they can do with their families is, you know, two questions of what else they would like to learn about the podcast. Um, you know, two statements of what the podcast reminded them of and then thick questions that they would be able to ask their other classmates. And if and when the students do get together, whether it's in person or you do a Zoom breakout room, P.S. all of this is science fiction, hats off to you teachers who like break your students out into separate Zoom rooms. And, you know, I'm, I'm breaking into a sweat just trying to share my screen here. And so I, <laughs> so grateful for everything that you are doing teachers um just but, ask the children they tell you exactly what to do and they'll tell you when you've done it wrong too <laughs> well melissa i love that you're still laughing that is i tell you the fortitude that teachers have and the outlook i was just talking with my husband today about choosing joy and so i have to say teachers you you're You've got a bucket full of, you know, lots of adjectives to choose from. And so um, to choose joy just is testament to your, you know, what, what you're made of. So thank you again. Um, but anyway, back to the listening journals. So anyway, it's just a really great way um, to keep, tra keep track of what the students have listened to. And then if you wanted to do something like a fun Friday or, you know, the students could then choose instead of you assigning a podcast and they could choose something that they wanted to listen to and then share it with their classmates or you know family members um and then you know again with the listening groups um you know you could divide and conquer right so if you're doing a unit on the revolutionary war you can assign different podcasts for the different groups to listen to and then they come back and then they share they sort of teach each other what they have learned um, and then while those groups are working together, that would enable you uh, the opportunity to meet with a smaller group of students for, meet, for remediation if you needed to. Okay, talked a little bit about Fun Friday. Um, and then another super fun thing to do is to have the students create their own sort of scavenger hunt. And um, so I'm gonna click on to Google Maps and I'm going to open up my screen again. Let me make my sharing broader. Okay, look at that. I did it right the first time. Um, so this is actually a map. What I did is I just typed, I just typed in my. Uh, I'm gonna. Somebody's not on mute. If you all could mute yourself. Let's see. Hello. <laughs> I'm trying to find the, the mute. We can get everybody muted. There we go. Okay. Um, if you go to Google Maps and you just type in your address, then, you know, it, it pops up. And if you right click, then this pops up and you can measure the distance. So this is actually um, my old grammar school in Blue Island, Illinois. It's on the south side of Chicago and Paul Revere. So my starting point is going to be Paul Revere and you just click and as you click it sort of, you know, marks your distance. And so you could, let's say that if we want to go get some takeout, we can head on over here and then we're going to go get some more takeout from Tommy's place. 
And then we're gonna go down to the Taquiera. We're gonna get some more. We are just gonna fill on up, lots of takeout. Um, you can do a quick little walk around the park. And now we're gonna go get some dessert. We're gonna go to the bakery. Um, so you can just keep clicking, right? And all of this, it keeps tracking your distance. So we're almost up to a mile. And so then, oh, we hit one mile. So you can, this is a really great way for your students to practice map skills. So you can do, you know, the cardinal directions. You can say travel, you know, 400 feet north and turn east and, and da 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 da. So it, it really pulls in different skills, um, but it's just fun. And so that's just another thing. And you can have the students sort of track the routes that they've done. Um, and then maybe they can share with their friends, you know, they can do suggested routes. Um, so anyway, that's just sort of a fun thing that um, that the kids can do. Okay, let me shrink this back up again. Okay. Okay. Oh, don't forget the masks. Okay. And also, you always have the option of students creating their own podcast. Like Melissa said, they will tell you how to do it. There are so many resources out on, on the web. I did try to do like a, an initial search of, but there's limitless, um, you know, and some schools have different access to software, but there's a ton of free software out there. Um, and this just allows the students to have something that they're interested in. They might be interested in geckos. They might be interested in car engines. They might be interested in kombucha. Um, who knows? But if they are interested in something, give them the opportunity to do a five minute podcast about it. And, you know, so you could provide them the basic outline of what is it, what does it do, and, you know, how could it be helpful or whatever your parameters might be. Um, and then the students, you know, you could upload those podcasts to your website using, you know, Google or whatever. Um, and then the students could listen to them and they could sort of comment on each other's podcasts. It's such a great authentic learning experience that incorporates so many different skills, not the least of which is, you know, practicing public speaking. And if the students know that they're going to have, you know, a, a captive audience, um, it's amazing how much attention to detail uh, that they really do. They really up their game and it's just fun for them. Um, and then, you know, your high flyers, they can add sound effects. They can, you know, they can turn things. Um, they, hold on just one second. Hi, okay. Um, so anyway, endless possibilities with that. Okay, so here's the nitty gritty. How much does this program cost? Okay, so the preloaded Walkit player that we saw in the video, that comes preloaded with 167 podcasts. So that's enough for the entire school year. Um, we do encourage students to listen to that, to each podcast, you know, twice. So not necessarily on the same walk, but you know, on a separate walk. Those are $125, $125 per device. So, um, you know, if you have three fifth grade classrooms, you don't need three sets. You can get one set that can be shared among the three different groups. Um, there's no Wi-Fi or data needed. It's totally, you know, self-contained and it comes ready to go out of the box. The, the most off task that the students could be is if they listen to the wrong educational podcast, right? But there's no opportunity for them to, you know, text or to look on the internet. It is just completely self-contained device. Um, we also have a mobile app available. So a lot of students have, a lot of schools have one-to-one -one devices. Um, and especially if your students are at home, um, you know, they might have devices available to them. And uh, same thing. So we actually, there's several more podcasts. There's like 190, I think, podcasts um, available on the app. And it's on iOS or Android, and that's $3.99 per device per month. Okay. Um, with you get if the walk it, it has a one year warranty. And then, you know, we do have many teachers that one teacher that you saw in the video, she's been using the program for seven years. So they're, they're really durable. Okay. Teacher's guide to support the program, $150 for the print version. It's this hulky, you know, um, binder or uh, $100 for the electronic version, except for you wonderful teachers for being here today. Um, we will go ahead and send you a link to a free electronic teacher's guide. Um, and so then you'll be able to sort of see 
um, you know, how the walk-in classroom might align with what you're doing and if it's in fact a good fit for you. So we encourage you to take a look through that. We'll go ahead and send that out with all the other materials. For free. Um, and then if you did, if you were interested in purchasing the walk-in classroom, go to our homepage, thewalkinclassroom.org. We are a nonprofit program. Um, and in the upper right-hand corner, it says buy, and you can go ahead and click on that. Um, there's also a button that says apply. And as a nonprofit program, we do try to give the program away as much as we are able. Um, but we're only able to give the program away when we have resources. And unfortunately, um, you know, just with everything that's happened and, and COVID and our, our funding is limited. Um, so, you know, if, if, if you're not able to purchase the program, that's fine. And if you wanna apply for it, I encourage you, but I do just wanna manage expectations that um, we have our wait list of teachers waiting to get the program is, is several hundred teachers long. Um, and the wait list, you know, it's like into the, it's not gonna happen anytime soon, unfortunately. I would love to give the program away as much as possible, but um, that's just not an option. We just do not, we just don't have the funding to do that right now. Um, but if you wanted to write a grant and if you needed some help with grant funding, like wording for grant funding on our website, we have lots and lots of, um, you know, feel free to cut and paste freely just as much as you want, plug it into your, you know, different grant applications, um, you know, and, and we can, you know, help as much as we can that way. Um, and I'm starting to say, um, a whole lot. So I'm wondering if, you have any questions, um, go ahead and enter them in the chat box uh, and I will do my best to answer them as possible. Oh, Heaton, you're so sweet. She says, the children love it. Thank you for your hard work. Um, the kids do love it. And um, I promise you, they're, they're just so happy to get the heck out of the classroom. They don't even realize how much they're benefiting, but especially it, it's great for everybody just the, the movement and and you know the change of pace and getting away from the screen but especially for those periphery learners it, it is a game changer i promise you it, and their confidence really does build and they see themselves as learners and they, they see that they have value and they are able to contribute to this whole classroom dynamic um, and it gives them confidence to try harder in other areas and and we've heard this literally from hundreds of teachers um, so it's it's really just a, such a powerful thing if you have any questions um, that's my email laura at the walking classroom.org and then that's our phone number um, I love that keep calm and walk on. It's one of my favorite illustrations. Keep clam and walk on. <laughs> Do whatever we can. Um, so let's see, for teachers, um, so I'm just reading the questions. So for teachers that already have the kits, is there any way to share the podcast with students? Um, how can we share while the kids are at home? We do have some free podcasts that are available from our website. So if you go um, on our website, thewalkinclassroom.org, there are some free podcasts available that you can download. There's, I think there's about like 10 or maybe 15 podcasts that are available for free um, with, with the you know, um, teacher's guide, the lesson plans. So you can go ahead and, you know, just test it out and even just assign that to your kids. Well, if they're at home, um, get them, you know, warmed up to the idea. We also have had some teachers who have done like a donors choose. And so they've been able to fund the program that way. Um, but like I said, we're a nonprofit. We've got our half our staff is former teachers and we will do whatever we can to help you be successful with the implementation of the program. So please just let us know if you need anything. Um, okay. And the youngest grades that we have used this with. So we um, sort of the sweet spot is grades three through eight. And um, we do have some high school programs that use it. Um, and we also have some like detention centers where there's the students are, um, you know, residential detention centers. Um, students use it there as well. I would not recommend it for younger than third grade just because the students do use an earbud while they walk and we encourage them to only cover one ear so that they can sort of maintain an awareness of their surroundings. Um, 
And so with younger grades, it's sort of a lot to manage to try to listen to what they're pay attention to what they're listening to, to try to pay attention to their surroundings, to walk. Um, so it's, it's a little bit too much for, you know, kids younger than third grade to manage. Um, we also, you know, there's the upward end is limitless. We have some seniors that enjoy using the program as well. And if you use it, your Jeopardy game is going to, you know, skyrocket. Um, but uh, so yeah, <laughs> three, through, three through eight is sort of is sort of the sweet spot for it. Um, Okay, and so the topics are, like I said, science, social studies, language arts, biographies, lots and lots of stuff. We'll send you a list of everything. Um, and then, all right, and um, okay, are there any other questions? Does anybody well, There was a question about whether or not the podcasts are available in, um, via uh, anything other than the devices, which you mentioned we have an, an, a new app and we are also probably in November going to launch um, a web version of the app that will be available for bulk purchase by schools and school districts um, as another alternative coming up. Stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> That's Deborah. She's our executive director. She's on the pulse of everything. I'm a one trick pony. I only know what's in front of me. <laughs> um, but teachers, I love you so much. I am so grateful for all that you do. I'm honored that you took some of your time in the time that you don't have uh, to learn more about this program. And um, like I said, we will do everything we can to work with you to help you get the program. And um, thank you so much. I hope you're safe. I hope you're healthy and have a great night. If you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. I'll stay on if anybody has any other, other questions, but for the rest of you, those, that's it, show's over. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Very informative. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank thanks, you. Laura. It's always a treat to hear your good information. Oh, thank you. So thank you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you coming on.